Wow, and Ed joins us now. I mean, this is going to be fascinating. You have mm. done so much. You've walked the length of the Amazon <clears throat> River. You spent 60 days in naked solitude on a Fijian island. Why this? Why explore homelessness? I think because at the moment, no one can avoid the fact that homelessness, well, rough sleeping is very visible and it's yeah. on the rise and massively on the rise. I think in the last um, 10 years in, in London, it's doubled. And, and um, I'm an ex-forces and I was also told that a third of all homeless people are ex-military. Um, right. And when it was put to me by Channel 4, look, would you be prepared to sleep rough for 60 days in order to get an insight into this world, in order to tell people stories? I thought it would be an amazing challenge, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. What sort of preconceived ideas did you have? I deliberately didn't sort of gen up on, on the homelessness issues at all. I didn't want to walk in with any preconceived ideas. I, I, I was quite naive in terms of um, homelessness. I didn't have much interaction with homeless people before. On day one of shooting, I actually said to the series producer, I don't actually want to go and sit down with a homeless person. I was, I was that nervous about the whole situation. And yet, of course, as soon as I did and I had a chat and they were lovely, um, it sort of it started to open my eyes. And I started so how do you integrate it. as a guy with a with a crew? Because obviously they're going to be very wary <clears> of <throat> you. How do you integrate immediately? You know, sort of pick your slot and that's where I'm going to sit. It, I had to find my feet with it. Initially, I had some really negative reactions. I used the term intentionally homeless at first and it didn't work at all. It made people really quite angry, actually. I then decided, do you know what? Honesty is always the best policy. And so I sat down, had a chat about the weather, gave someone a cigarette, talked about him for a little bit. And then he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm making a programme for Channel 4. Um, we're telling the stories of people who are sleeping rough. Um, if you're interested in be part of that, we'd love to chat to you. And at that point, you're not, you're not faking, you're not pretending, and therefore people either say yes, we'd Obviously. love to be Not hidden it, cameras, or they've got your cameras were in full, full the, view. At that point, cameras then come in, Yeah. once they've said yes. There were many surprises along the way. Um, one of them was that whilst you were doing it over the 60 days, you actually put on weight. I think you gained yeah, sort of five kilos of, of fat, you said. I did, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, one of the preconceptions is that, you know, you think you wouldn't have much to eat. I, I have a bit of an issue with food, and I was really worried that I wouldn't get enough food. Um, in London, and I'm, I'm not making up anything, in the morning you can wake up and you, there's a food handout that gives you coffee and bacon sandwich. You're given sandwiches all day long by members of the public and McDonald's meals and all that sort of stuff. In the evening, there's food handouts uh, where you could probably have a choice of Asian fusion or curry. So much food, the majority of it, chunk food, if I'm honest. So it's not that... It was shocking, the sheer quantities of food, not that that's necessarily a healthy diet. It, it wasn't at all, that's yeah. why... I, I, you know, I was also had a blood result when I came back and it said, if I was to continue that lifestyle, I've got 100% uh, likelihood of developing cardiovascular um, illness. Right. So, um, One homeless man complained that the public <coughs> never fed him. He did. I mean, he was quite a contentious person. Right, but, right, right, But they right. did say that. I think, I think the problem is everyone is compassionate towards homelessness at the moment. Um, no one likes the fact there's loads of rough sleepers on the street and that's great. Um, I think, personally, that charity comes with a bit of responsibility. If you're giving food, mm. that can allow an existence to happen on the streets. Right. But if you give food and perhaps addiction counselling or food and help assistance with mental health, then you're helping or help to navigate the housing system, then you're helping to change a situation. Because and that was used ultimately what you say is shelter wasn't actually a problem, food wasn't actually a problem, no. but the addiction to drugs and alcohol, yeah, um, and that dependency and the mental health issues are the so uh, is the problem. That is that's the real problem that needs. There's a distinction help. between rough sleeping and homelessness. Right. right, homelessness, the problem is lack of housing, undoubtedly. But homelessness includes people in temporary accommodation and hostels and hotels, all that yeah. sort of stuff. Rough sleeping, the people on the street, that's not due to lack of housing. That is due to, in my personal opinion, I'm not an expert on, but you know, 60 days is quite a long time to to sort of soak mm -hmm. up what's going on. It's addiction and it's mental health problems. And, and everyone's got a tragic story. They've all come from some sort of broken family. But once on the streets, it's literally, virtually everyone would fall into those two categories. Yeah. I, uh, I, I was stopped yesterday um, yeah. on the streets of London by a guy who, uh, who said, be careful what I say, because I obviously don't want to identify any part of him. But uh, he'd had a very rough time. He'd come from up north, was down on the streets of London. Um, and I gave him quite a bit of money. Yeah. Uh, you think that's a bad idea? I think I would also say that I, I do think it's a bad idea now. Um, I isn't, mean, that, isn't that, doesn't that sort of reinforce the stereotype we have? Oh, don't give them any money because they just go out and buy drugs. Do you know what, Philip? I went in with the intention of blowing that stereotype apart. I wanted to blow that apart. And yet, if you're faced with a reality, 
food wasn't a problem, ha uh, hats and gloves weren't a problem, sleeping bags weren't a problem, tents weren't a problem, all, everything was being given to homeless people. Virtually every bit of money that was given was spent on alcohol and drugs. And if you see something and you're trying to explode the stereotype and you just, I'm really sorry, I can't explode this stereotype. So the thing is, you don't I think, want to... Sorry, go on. I think there's a responsibility. Yes, by all means, give, give money, but everyone seems to think, oh, I'm quite liberal, I'm free thinking. Do you know what, if they want to spend it on drugs, let them spend it on drugs. But what I was experiencing was everyone had that attitude now. Everyone thought they were quite unique in having that very liberal attitude towards giving homeless people drugs. I've got a guy living with me that I made friends with on the Strand now. He's painting and decorating my house. And he would totally agree with me. And, you know, you can make, certainly in the run-up to Christmas, we were witnessing 150, 200 pounds a day cash in hand. Not that people had that in their hand at the end of the day, because as soon as they've got 20 quid, they're off to get the next hit. So what, and but the, it, and it you really don't want to put people enable... off. Like, you, I, thought, I thought I was giving him the money yesterday for two or three nights of a roof over his head. Well, that's what, that's but, what I'd be thinking. Th that, that is why I think it's important to have programmes like this which expose what is really, really going on. And I have massive compassion for people who have hit rock bottom and fallen through the safety nets, but I think... The assistance can't just be money, it can't just be food. It has to be help with mental health and addiction problems as well, because then you're helping people change their lives rather than enabling it to just continue. Well, we asked um, Shelter um, what advice they would give, and they yeah. said, if you're concerned about someone who is sleeping rough, the best thing to do is always tell uh, Streetlink, a charity who have outreach services that can go directly to the person. If the person can get access to a phone, they can also call Shelter for free um, themselves. So better to go to one of these organisations that are... Yeah. experts in this. I and guess. they go on to say some people want to help straight away with money or a hot drink and some food. That is an individual choice. I would agree with that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. But you shouldn't... I was presented... I think the really fascinating thing about this show, which wasn't probably intentional, was you go in and have one chat with a homeless person and you get presented almost a street story. And it's often quite a sob story and it's often designed to make you be generous with money. Mm. As days went by and I followed people's lives, the cracks in those stories started to appear. And the reality of actually, and it, and it ended up being stereotypes, it ended up being, it falls back into the cliche of broken families, problems with addiction, history of being in and out of jail, um, mental health problems. Mm. And, and um, not that that reduces the compassion, but it does, you know, everyone's got to be aware of what's going on. There's no point pretending the homeless situation is far more squeaky clean than it is. It's, it deserves compassion, but it needs compassion in, a, in an intelligent manner, really. Well, 60 Thank Days you. on the Streets is, uh, starts tonight at 9 on, uh, on Channel 4. Um, and thank you. Thank, thank you very, very much, much. Thank, thank you. Thank you.